Hi everyone, welcome to Uniform Circular Motion. We're again talking about universal gravitation, and this is part two of universal gravitation. Let's look at this problem. The Earth completes its rotation around the Sun each year with an average distance of 1.5 times 10 to 11 meters. Use this information to calculate the mass of the Sun. So we could use this, um, we're gonna do these steps to figure that out. A, what is the period of the Earth around the Sun? So first, let's kind of draw the whole situation out. We have the Sun. Looks something like this, probably not, but yes. And we have the Earth, and it's orbiting the Sun like this. And we know the average distance is 1.5 times 10 to 11 meters. It says average because we know it's an elliptical. A, what is the period of the Earth? We should know it takes one year to go around the Earth, which is 365 days. Uh, if we wanted to be more specific, we'd say 365.256 days. But anyway, we'll leave it at that. We know 365 times 24 gives us the hours, 8,760 hours. Times 60 will give us the minutes, and another times 60 will give us the seconds. So we're going to use that, the seconds. So we get 31,536,000 seconds. That's the period. It's one year, but most likely we're going to use seconds for this answer. So I just uh, changed the seconds. Part B, with what velocity does the Earth move? So we should know velocity is equal to 2 pi r divided by t. So velocity is 2 pi r, the radius. So it's 1.5 times 10 to 11 meters away. 0.5 times 10 to 11. And divided by the period, which we found was 31,536,000. And this should give us the velocity. 2 pi times 1.5 times 10 to the power of 11 divided by 31,536,000, which gives us a velocity of 29,885.8 meters per second. Okay, and that's actually how around how fast the Earth is going around the sun. You can look it up. Part C says, what is the centripetal acceleration that the Earth experiences? Okay, so we should know centripetal acceleration which is the same thing as acceleration of gravity in this case, but this is equal to V squared over R. So we know centripetal acceleration is gonna be 29,885.8 squared divided by the radius, 1.5 times 10 to the 11. And let's see what this gives us. Squared divided by 1.5 times 10 to the power of 11. And we get a very low number because it's very, very far away, 0.00. .00 I'm just going to call it 6 whoops, meters per second squared. Okay, But that's the acceleration centripetal or the acceleration of gravity that they both feel from each other. Oh, not the acceleration. Uh, so that's not going to be the acceleration of the sun, just the acceleration the Earth feels from the sun. Okay, find the mass of the Earth. Okay, so this is where it gets a little bit confusing. So we know force of gravity is equal to g mass of sun, mass of earth, divided by r squared. We should also know, since we know the acceleration of gravity of the earth, we can do mass of earth times acceleration of gravity is equal to g mass of sun, mass of earth, r squared. We can see mass of earth is on both sides, so they cancel out. Acceleration of gravity of the earth is 0 0.006 is equal to 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 mass of sun, divided by r, 1.5 times 10 to the 11th uh, meters, oops, uh, all that squared, and let's find the mass of the sun. 1.5 times 10 to the power of 11 squared times 0 0.006, divided by 6.67 times 10 to the power of negative 11, and we get that it's around 2 times 10 to the 30 kilograms. And that is actually the mass of the sun. You can also Google that if you want. Okay, hopefully that made sense. We're gonna continue with this. All right, let's look at this. A student who weighs 500 newtons on Earth travels to a planet that has a mass and radius that's double the Earth. His weight on the planet uh, is about blank. Okay, so we know this planet is gonna have twice the mass of, of Earth, and it's also gonna have twice the radius. And we want to know what his weight is. So we know force of gravity is the same thing as weight. So we should know that the force of gravity is equal to g m1 
m2 r squared. One thing we know is this planet here has twice the amount of mass. So what that means is this is going to change by a factor of 2. And it also has twice the amount uh, of the radius. So it's twice as big or wide, I should say. So twice the radius. So we should know that this is going to change by a factor of 2 on the numerator, but a factor of 4 in the denominator. So this side will change by a half. So this side should also change by a half. So if he weighed 500 newtons, we should now know that he's going to weigh half of that, which is 250 newtons. Okay? Watch that over if it didn't make sense, because I know it did go a little bit quickly with that. Okay? All right. Let's look at this. Uh, and if you're doing example number 24, it's exactly the same. It just doesn't lift, list the steps. So I'm just going to show example number 23. Neptune orbits the sun with an orbital radius of 4.495 times 10 to the 12 meters. If the mass of the sun is 1.99 times 10 to the 30 kilograms, what acceleration of gravity does Neptune experience from the Earth? Okay, so let's just kind of draw this out. Again, sun, ba ba ba, Neptune, all the way over here. Neptune's further, so we're just drawing over there. Okay, mass of sun, 1.99 times 10 to the 30 kilograms. It's going to be 4.49, oops. 4.495 times 10 to the 12 meters. And now we're going to find the acceleration of gravity of the, the Neptune experiences. So part A, we should know force of gravity is equal to G, mass of Neptune, mass of Sun, divided by R squared. We should know this force of gravity can be uh, the mass of Neptune times the acceleration of gravity that Neptune experiences. Um, times uh, big G, which is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11, mass of Neptune, which we don't know, mass of the Sun, which is given 1.99 times 10 to the 30, divided by R, which is 4.495 times 10 to the 12 squared. We see that the mass of Neptune cancels out, and we can find what the acceleration of gravity is. So let's try to figure this out. 6.67 times 10 to the power of negative 11 times 1.99 times 10 to the power of 30 divided by 4.495 times 10 to the power of 12 squared. And we get acceleration of gravity as, whoops, <laughs> point zero, one, two, three, four, five, five zeros, one, two, three, four, five zeros, six, six meters per second squared. Very, very small and so because Neptune is very, very far away. The question now is, with what velocity does Neptune travel around the sun? So we should know acceleration of gravity is the same thing as the acceleration centripetal. Okay, that's what allows it to go in a circle, which is v squared over r. So now we can say 0 0.0000, uh, zero to 5066 is equal to v squared divided by r, which is 4.495 times 10 to the power 12. So let's figure this out. Times 4.495 times 10 to the power of 12. Square root of that. And we get velocity is equal to 5,434 uh, meters per second. Okay. Last part. Calculate the period of Neptune's orbit. So we should know, I guess I'm just doing it on top of here. Velocity is equal to 2 pi r divided by t. We know velocity, 5,434, which is equal to 2 pi. The radius, which is 4.495 times 10 to the tw uh, 12, sorry, <laughs> all divided by the period t. So now let's do some algebra to figure that out. So I'm going to do 2 pi times 4.495. 5 times 10 to the power of 12 divided by 5434. 4, 4. And this will give me the period, ooh, which is a very long number. Maybe I'm going to put this over here. If you have this in exponential or in the exponent, that's fine. But I get 5197445336 seconds or... Uh, let me divide that by 60, get that in minutes, divide by 60, get that in hours, 
Five by twenty-four get that in days. Uh, or sixty thousand one hundred and fifty-five days. <laughs> so it takes that long for the Neptune to go around the sun one time. So we'd all be very young if we lived on Neptune. All right. <laughs> okay, moving on. Okay, we just did that one, but it was just one step problem. Okay, let's look at this. An astronaut goes out for a spacewalk at a distance above Earth's surface equal to the radius of Earth. What is her acceleration due to gravity? So this is Earth. We'll say this is the radius of Earth. And then the person is out here, another radius of the Earth. So we should know force of gravity is equal to G M1 mass of Earth R squared. Another way we could write this is the mass of the person going for the spacewalk times acceleration of gravity is equal to G mass of the person times mass of the Earth R squared. We know the mass of the person is going to cancel out. And now this person is going to be twice as far because he's going on a spacewalk, which is twice as far as where he originally was from the center of the Earth. So that means this side is going to change by a factor of a fourth. And that means this acceleration of gravity is going to change by a fourth. I mean, gravity is going to decrease by four, meaning D is going to be our correct answer. Again, please look at that if you're confused, because I know I went through that quickly, and students have usually have a harder time with these more conceptual questions. Okay, one of the last questions here. An astronaut exploring a distant solar system lands on an unnamed planet with a radius of 3,560,000 thousand meters when the astronaut jumps upward within the speed of three meters per second she rises to a height of 0.82 meters what is the mass of the planet okay so there's a few steps we're going to do to figure this out so okay she gets to a height of 0.82 meters she goes up with a velocity of three meters per second so something we should know is we can figure out what the acceleration is knowing these bits of information we know the velocity at the top is zero. So knowing that, let's see if we can figure this out. We can do VF squared equals V initial squared plus 2A change in X to find out what the acceleration is on this planet. VF at the very top, we know the velocity is zero. We know at the very beginning, V initial, the initial velocity is three plus 2A, and we know it goes up to a height of 0.82. So let's see if we can find the acceleration. 9 divided by 2 divided by 0.82. And we see the acceleration of gravity on this planet is 5.49 meters per second squared. Okay, that's going to be important. Now that we know the acceleration, let's see if we can use that to find the mass of the planet. We know force of gravity is equal to G, mass of the person, times mass of the planet, maybe a bolded <laughs> r squared force of gravity so we know the force of the gravity of the person is going to be mass of the person times the acceleration of gravity which is 5.49 which is equal to capital g which is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 mass of the person mass of the planet that's what we're looking for this mass of the planet divided by r squared which is 3 million five hundred and sixty thousand squared we can see mass of the person cancels out, and we can do a bit of algebra to figure out what this mass of the planet is. So I'm doing 3,560,000 squared times 5.49 divided by 6.67 times 10 to the power of negative 11. And we see the mass of this planet is 1.04 times 10 to the power of 24 kilograms. Okay, all planets are big, so you should be getting a big number like that. Last one. Spacecraft X has twice the mass of spacecraft Y. They have the same distance from the Earth as they orbit. Which of these must be true? X feels a uh, greater gravitational force than Y. X travels twice as fast as Y. X takes twice as long to complete an orbit. The orbit up here of X is the same as Y. Okay, so we have a planet here, and we have x orbiting and y orbiting. So we know that they're both going to be the same distance away from each other, 
but x has twice the amount of mass. So there's a lot more mass with x. So I'm going to bold it because it has a lot of mass. Y is skinny. It doesn't have that much mass. Okay? So what we should know is x feels a greater gravitational force than y. So spacecraft x has twice the mass of a spacecraft y. They have the same distance from the Earth as they orbit, which of these must be true. So x feels greater uh, force, a uh, gravitational force than y. So that's true. Since uh, it has more mass, that means it's going to have a greater uh, gravitational force. Uh, B, x travels twice as fast as y. Um, that's not going to be the case. So we know that force of gravity is equal to g m1 mass of Earth r squared. So we know that actually the mass of the satellite times the acceleration, whatever the mass is that's orbiting, it's actually going to cancel out. So whatever the mass is, it doesn't matter. The acceleration is going to be the same. So the acceleration of, the, of, of spacecraft X and spacecraft Y are going to be the same. So it's not going to travel faster. They're going to have the same acceleration, and which also means they're going to have the same speed. X takes twice as long to complete an orbit. That's also not true because since they have the same velocity and same acceleration, it's going to take the same time to go around their, uh, the orbit. The orbital period of X is the same as Y. That is, that is true because since... The mass doesn't matter, and they're the same distance away from each other. Mathematically, you're going to see that they're going to orbit at the same amount of time. Okay? All right, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. That's everything with uniform circular motion. I hope it made sense, and I hope this was helpful. All right. See you guys with the next chapter.